Here we go. Had a dream last night. Make work a little bit easier. What we're going to try and do here is just create something out of a basic room. I've got uh, three 24 by 12s there. We've got a wall here. Anyone can have a flat wall. So what this little thought I've had, we're going to make a triangle on the wall, the piece of the cut off, we're going to layer onto the face. We're going to do exactly the same on the ceiling. So when the whole thing is finished, it's set off with the Trimtech chamfer beam. That corner, as you look up into there, that is going to look 3D. If it doesn't look 3D, you won't see me again, I'm telling you. So that's the shape we're going to have, so it's all a matter about planning and working off the same line. Yeah, so what we do now, we've got the plan, which is uh, pretty scary. All we're going to do is transfer it onto the board, cut, uh, scribe the board out, cut it, and install it. So we've gone for a width of 1200 across the base. We want a 600 across the top, which will give us a wet shape. The pieces that come off there are able to reuse for the second skin of the line. And all you do, because you've got a very steady hand, you Give this a, a quick little spray around the perimeter with the 847 glue. So when it goes on the water holes, so we just put a couple of fasteners there for that to take. sides to make sure they're adhered properly. They're all sitting back nice and flat. And as big as if that's out too far off the wall, when you put your moulding over the top, you're going to have a gap between the moulding and the sheet. So that's sitting back nice and flat there now. So we go to the next step and we put the sewing sheet up. checking the perimeter, make sure it's sitting up tight. Where required, just throw another couple of tacks in. Right here, because we'll cut the wings off that and we're going to join them in the centre of the board, what we need to do is make sure we keep it dead plumb down the centre. So I'm going to shoot a string line from the centre to the centre on the wall sheet, once again, head on the ceiling sheet which gives me a nice clean line to work to. And so what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll place these two wings to make sure everything lines up properly. Uh, measure twice, cut once, so to speak. And it makes it so much easier. Using our chalk line, the first one. And so what we'll do now is spray them down with adhesive Hold them on the wall and tack where required. And 
spare suit. We'll just throw a couple of laminating screws in. Doesn't really matter where these go. The uh, by the time you take the joint and set with the beads, the whole face is going to be covered. Pretty happy with that. That's your laminating done. As you can see, the screw heads aren't going right in because of the fact that I'm going to be setting the whole face only up from B to the joint right across. So we can have a, a stop bead down here, another stop bead there, set at the joint, giving us that 3D all coming up at this point here. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, uh, we've selected the chamfer stop to do the finish on uh, both sides here to soften these up. Where you cut an obtuse angle like that, there's obviously no tool that can show you how to cut it. So all you do is just carry a small piece of the bead, just sit it on the board where it's going to run like that. Scribe along it up that side. So go, just sit it at the right spot there, you'll feel where it sits. So that is the bottom length. So when you cut these, you can see they're going to be quite long from here, they're going to be cut on an angle on both sides. So they're a very long angle, but uh, hopefully well worth it. Also doing with this section here, we're coming down the length of the bead because as you use the 847 adhesive on the bead and the, uh, and the wall, when you put the stop on, it's really going to grip. So with uh, having marks like what I've got on here, the bead sitting there, describe it, and you can see I've got points all the way down the length. So as I put the bead, the stop bead on, it's going virtually straight into position and it's lining itself up immediately. Well, now with our little off cut that we normally throw away, we've got these marks scribed on different points on the high and the low point of the bead. We're going to cut them by hand, cut it in half then hold them up on the apex so we get the exact line. Then we transfer that down onto the full bead and cut that and uh, it'll make it a whole lot easier to put the bead up. So I'll just uh, let me try and cut them now as straight as I can. Okay, now that we've got those trimmed, we just hold both pieces together, running up the lines that we scribed them on, keeping the tails close. So that's, uh, that's pretty close, that's pretty close to where you want to be. And then your beads on the top section will come through and they'll be butted and mitered into there. Right, right, don't forget, as your beads are coming up, where they were square before, I had to chamfer them because we've got two beads coming in. So what you end up with, with a 45 chamfer back off this, with your tape and joint is coming up the line that we bring both beads together that's our finish up there we're looking at the solid lead not the mud lead here okay now here we go we've got the 847 glue ready we're going to uh, spray the bead and spray the area that the bead's going to sit on also going to use the 710 at the junction point at the apex in the corners, so we're going to whack all these beads on there. We've pre cut them, checked all the mortars, they appear to be somewhat near right. Stapling at uh, 200 max centers, so that's about 180 mil. So we're about the length of the staple gun. around 
around maybe 45 minutes, 50 minutes setup time, cut your beads and put them on just for this small area. You can already see the effect that we're after coming into play. Uh, the reason for putting these lines on here for guiding the bead, number one, put your bead on straight, number two, also gives your line to work your glue to so you're not spraying over the whole surface. You don't really want glue coming out onto this surface here, it's only through there. It's simple as, just check your beads as you're going along also, staple it every 200, 180, 200. Tip the, the mud leg where required, if there's a slight bow if not adhering, just tip it again, which will rejoin it back to the uh, 847 spray. But the, all that's left now is to start taping and setting that. So this is the longest part of the process. Material you normally throw away or get a couple of sheets. You can actually make, uh, you can make enough to buy a few beers on this. It's, uh, it's quite good and it adds value to yourself as a plasterer.